This video was brought to you by CuriosityStream. If the EU has proved anything, it's that trade deals aren't merely economic. They encourage and often precede closer political relations. That's why the new Open Balkan initiative, which essentially aims to create an EU-style single market in southeastern Europe, is worth taking a look at. It's a comprehensive economic agreement in its own right, but it might also better guarantee both economic prosperity and political stability in a region that has historically struggled on both these fronts. So, in this video, we'll be taking a look at the Open Balkan Initiative, whether it's actually going to happen and what it could mean for the Balkans. If you like our videos, then be sure to subscribe and help us get closer to half a million subscribers. Anyway, let's get into it. First, a bit of recent history. In 2014, a German-led diplomatic initiative called the Berlin Process was set up to consolidate and maintain the dynamics of the EU integration process. Its aim was to revitalise multilateral ties between the Western Balkans and the EU by improving regional cooperation on issues of infrastructure and economic development, but without implying any potential automatic EU membership. This idea was to maintain ties with the Balkan countries without upsetting the Eurosceptics in the EU, after then-EU Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker announced a five-year suspension on the Union's admission of new members. However, frustrated by the slow speed of accession, the Western Balkan countries decided to do it themselves. Consequently, in 2019, just five years after the Berlin process, Albania, North Macedonia and Serbia set up their own scheme called the Open Balkan Initiative. The Albanian Prime Minister was outspoken in public about his frustrations over the EU accession process, saying, Enlargement has not stalled, it has stopped. The Serbian Prime Minister agreed, saying, It's time to take things in our hands and decide on our destiny and future ourselves. This Open Balkan initiative was founded by the leaders of Serbia, Albania and North Macedonia, with the aim of integrating with the rest of the Western Balkans, so Kosovo, Montenegro and Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's been dubbed a mini Schengen area or mini EU, as it aims to replicate the four freedoms of the EU, free movement of goods, capital, services and people. Accordingly, citizens of member states would only need an ID card, not a passport, to visit each other's member states, and there would be complete visa-free travel. There's also a plan for a mini Erasmus scheme to encourage student exchanges, and a planned relaxation of work permit requirements. Furthermore, the elimination of border checks for goods will increase trade by up to 2.71 billion euros each year, according to World Bank estimates. Member states are also optimistic that the new initiative will encourage capital investment from abroad, whilst also promoting internal interstate investment. As well as those economic benefits, there are also some less tangible socio-political benefits. Whilst Montenegro and Bosnia and Herzegovina weren't originally too enthusiastic about the project, wary of Serbia's domineering influence in the current bloc, both have apparently had a change of heart. After attending the most recent summit of the Open Balkan Initiative as guests on June the 8th, Montenegro's new Prime Minister and Chairman of the Council of Ministers of Bosnia and Herzegovina both declared their full support for the initiative. Their accession could improve relations with Serbia. Serbia-Montenegro relations are unsurprisingly tense after the collapse of Yugoslavia in the 90s, but got worse in the 2000s when the Dukanovic government in Montenegro boycotted the state community of Serbia and Montenegro, a forum established by the EU Sponsorship Agreement in 2002 to manage relations. Relations improved with the election of Aleksandr Vucic in Serbia in 2012, but have remained tense, and in 2020, Montenegro expelled the Serbian ambassador for comments he made about Montenegro's statehood. It's a similar story with Bosnia and Herzegovina, Again, there were residual tensions over the two countries' differing interpretations of the events that led to the collapse of former Yugoslavia, especially the Srebrenica massacre. Relations hit a new low in 2015 when Russia, at Serbia's request, vetoed a British proposal for a UN resolution defining the Srebrenica massacre as a genocide 
And a few days later, Vucic was attacked by a crowd while attending the Srebrenica anniversary ceremony. You get the idea. The Open Balkans initiative might help improve Serbia's relations with the Balkan neighbourhoods, which haven't been great recently. But while that all might sound good, there are a few stumbling blocks. The first problem is Kosovo. The Kosovo Prime Minister, Albert Kurti, has declined to attend any summit on the Open Balkans initiative, largely because Serbia has never recognised Kosovo's independence. Many in Kosovo and elsewhere are worried that the Open Balkan initiative is a facade for the Serbian regional hegemony and the notion of a Serbian world most fiercely advocated by Serbia's interior minister. This ties into the second obstacle, fear of Russian influence in Serbia. Many believe that this Open Balkan initiative could be a potential rival to the EU, set up by Russia and Serbia. There are fears that the Open Balkan Initiative could cement Russia's influence in the region, given Belgrade's close ties with Moscow. Recently, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has expressed support for the initiative, fueling claims that the project is Russian-backed. Nonetheless, this is not the view of the EU, which is in fact very supportive of the scheme. The EU Commissioner for Enlargement and Neighbourhood Policy has openly backed the Open Balkan Initiative, suggesting it might both help solve the Balkans' political problems and even accelerate the country's accession into the European Union. To conclude, with only three nations officially signed up, it's unlikely the entirety of the Western Balkans will be united under a unified single market or Schengen zone anytime soon. However, that's not to say that certain nations can't carry on with their own initiative or that this scheme won't even go ahead. So, as always, subscribe to stay updated. Subscribing won't get you everything though, because there were a ton of exclusive videos on Nebula, including all of these ones, videos which will never come to YouTube. That's not all though. All of our videos are also there ad-free, and some are on Nebula a day or so before YouTube. How much would you pay for exclusive videos, early access and ad-free viewing? Well, how about a pound a month? No, really, because we've partnered with CuriosityStream, the home to the best documentaries online. Thanks to them, you can get both streaming services, CuriosityStream for the docs and Nebula for bonus TLDR, for less than $15 a year. That's a wild deal and a 26% discount on their already low price. So get yourself a ton of documentaries and exclusive content from your favourite creators, including the Daily Briefing Extended Edition, by signing up using the link below. Thanks for your support.